Foolis completely changed my life. I was still in college when I came on the show, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next. Then my act aired right after I graduated. You got 15 tricks here, and they're all really, really good. My phone started to ring and ring. People were wanting to hire me. Magicians that I admired suddenly knew my name. My parents, who loved me a lot, suddenly realized that what made me happy could also make me money. What parent doesn't want that for their kid? My next dream was to do a national tour. So I booked one, couch surfing with friends the whole time. Halfway through, it caught fire. I'm ready to do a real tour now. The bottom line for me is this. All magicians are grateful for Fool Us. But I have even more reason to be grateful than most. Tonight is my thank you performance. And if I grab the trophy, I'll say thank you for that too. Two randomly selected members of our studio audience give it up for the magic of Giancarlo Bernini. Oh man, man, it is such a thrill to be back on the show. And I'll be honest, last time I was here, I was nervous. Not so much about the trick I was doing, I was nervous that I wasn't gonna understand Penn and Teller's code words at the end of my act. Because, I mean, let's face it, that's a big part of the show. We're all trying to figure out what the heck Penn is saying when he talks in magician speak at the end of someone's performance. So I thought today, I'm going to show you how a magic trick works. And I'll throw in some Penn and Teller code along the way. That way you all might have a chance of understanding how that code works. Now, exposing magic secrets can be a dangerous thing. You two are very close to the action. So we do have some protective gear for you guys, these safety helmets. Do you each mind placing one of these on your heads, nice and tight? Make sure it fits snugly. Thank you so much. Can you swap them on your heads there? Perfect. I also have some items for you to examine. Dylan, would you take a look at this rope? Just pull on it, make sure it doesn't come apart anywhere. Take a look at this mug, make sure that it's all welded together, nothing slides or moves around. And I'll take one end of that rope from Dylan, hold on to the other end tightly. Alex, would you hold on to this end? And my goal is now to take this mug and hang it on the rope by the handle without either of you letting go of your ends. Now, I think we can all agree that doesn't sound possible, but in order for you to experience magic, can you let go there? In order for you to experience magic, we are going to have to leave the two of you in the dark. <laughs> Literally. You all can't see through those visors, can you? No. No, see, these helmets are here to protect the secret. The secret of the trick. Alex, I'm going to take one end of the rope from you, just one end, hold on to the other end as tightly as you can. And for a moment, fellas, can you just push up on those visors just so you can see the situation that we're in? Now, Dylan, with your left hand, can you hold on to this? You can switch hands there. Hold on to that as tight as you can, that end. You've got this end. Don't let go. You've got a mug. Here we go. Helmets down. Now, Dylan, if you don't let go of your end of the rope, and Alex doesn't let go of his end, there's absolutely no way possible that mug could end up hanging on that rope by the handle. But we're going to do it anyway. On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. Lift up your visors, guys. Take a look. Do you feel that? There's a mug on the rope. Hey, you guys can let go. Let go. Look at that. That's really on there. Yeah? Yeah. That was a joke that went over his head. <laughs> now, you can take that end. You can take this end. And, of course, if Penn and Teller were to try to code that to me, they might say they liked how the trick ended. They wished it had an extra end. So we'll do it again. You've got a mug. You each have one end of the rope. Helmets down. Now, this time, Alex, I'm going to take the mug from you. I'm going to hand it over to you, Dylan. Hold your right hand out. Hold it right there by the handle. Hold that right there over the rope. Now, Dylan, if you don't let go of your end of the rope, and if Alex doesn't let go of his end of the rope, there's no way possible that mug could end up on that rope with you holding it. But it's going to happen anyway. On the count of three, I want you to drop the mug. It's going to fall through the air and land on the rope and link onto it like magic. Are you ready? One, two, three. Do you feel that? Go ahead, take a look. Open up your helmet. Take a look. There's a mug on a rope. That's really on there. You're going to take that off of there for me if you don't mind. Fantastic. We're going to hold on to that if you don't mind. Fantastic. We're going to put your visors down one more time. Thank you, guys. Now, if Penn and Teller were to try to code that method to me, they might say something like, these two guys were duped. <laughs> so we'll do it again. 
This time a little bit differently. What I'm gonna do is have you fellas just open up your visors one more time if you don't mind. Just lift up your visors so you can see the situation. And now, Dylan, I'm gonna ask you to hold up one end of the rope. Now, I'm going to take the rope and thread it through the handle. And I want you to verify for everybody, you can see the rope going through the handle, yes? yes. Fantastic, would you hold on to that? Hold it right there. See, this time we're gonna start with the rope on the mug. And in fact, fellas, this time you can leave your visors up because this cloth is going to take the place of your helmets and protect the secret of the trick. After all, I can't leave the stage without giving Penn and Teller something to puzzle over. But this whole time I've been teaching you how to get a mug on a rope, I've told you nothing about getting a mug off a rope. And that is an entirely different science. And hopefully with that, you might understand some of those code words Penn and Teller are about to give me. Thank you. John Carlo Bonini, everyone. Come on over here, let's talk. This feels kind of like a Penn and Teller trick. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely inspired by them. I remember coming up with the idea while watching one of the episodes. I mean, I'm trying to thank them for the opportunity to be here in the first place and also just kind of share something that shows the love for the show. I started watching the show when I was in high school, so just being here is, is an honor. Did you do magic in high school? I did do magic in high school. I would try to do a magic show uh, in one of the classrooms during the dances. For all the kids who, kind of like me, weren't good dancers or weren't interested or wanted to take a break from the dance floor, we'd do like three shows a night. <laughs> and that's, I got my reps in. I, I learned how to work in front of a crowd. And it was, you know, I didn't have to worry about whether I had a date to the dance. And what kind of an audience were your classmates? Oh, they were amazing. They were, they were super enthusiastic. Giancarlo, yes. let's go to the boys. Penn and Teller, have you figured out the trick? Uh, Giancarlo, uh, uh, you know, you did. All, it, it's a great routine. It's a wonderful routine, especially for us. That's very nice. You did all the thing about me talking code. You did all the codes, what we're going to do. So we're done with that. We're not going to talk in code. We're going to just lay it out right for you there, okay? And I, we're just going to tell you how we think you did it with no code at all. We don't ever do this, but you've already used up all the code, so we're not going to we're not going to use any code. Maybe we'll we think, understand we this think one. that there's thread involved. You had an extra loop of thread, so it looked like it was hooked on there, but it really wasn't. It's that it's that simple. Is, is, is do you have a piece of thread on there? There is no okay, thread. Okay, I didn't go yet. Um, uh, <laughs> that, I was just saying that's one way someone could have, but you had, probably they were wearing the helmets, not just for the visors, but that had earpieces that say, say, you know, act like it's actually on there when it's not. They have earpieces in there? There is no I didn't think so. I didn't think there were earpieces in there. Because it's much simpler. It's much this. simpler than that. You just switch the mug. There was no mug switch. There's no mug switch? Ah, you fooled us. Books. Will history repeat itself? Before the night is over, we will find out after the break. 